marvellous. How you doing folks? Viewers of my channel might recognise the bus behind me here from such videos as how to replace your VW camper's fuel lines. Yes, this uh, very same VW was uh, featured in a previous video of mine where I replaced the fuel lines, but there are far bigger problems to contend with now, unfortunately. So let's get stuck in and have a look. The owner of the van in question told me that he was having running issues where it was uh, losing power at higher RPM and was generally sluggish. And um, he also mentioned as a footnote that there was a starting issue, which he identified as being the ignition switch. But uh, I can assure you it most certainly is not. It's actually 9 p.m. on a Saturday night, and uh, I decided that rather than sitting down and relaxing and uh, just having a couple of beers and uh, watching a bit of YouTube stuff myself, I said, you know what, I'm actually going to go and create a bit of YouTube content for a change, because I know I've been a little bit off the boil on that of late. Um, truth is, we've actually been, we're in the throes of trying to move house at the moment, so that's one of the things that's going on, and there are other things as well, but... Life in a life in the world of Ross Kelly is a little bit hectic at the moment, but um, anyway, yeah. Just in the case of this van, um, I will. I, I came up earlier on with my son, um, and uh, I just uh, he he wanted to come up and see camper dance, which is how, what he calls them. <laughs> and um, I decided, you know what? While I'm here, I will. Um, I'll just turn over the key and see what happens. But uh, this is all that happens. It'll probably work now. Wait until you see. Nope. Oh! Oh, that's not sounding nice. Alright, well, we'll come back to the starter issue in a minute. There's definitely a starter issue there. Once it spins over and engages, then it's fine. But it, it's not the issue. It's not the solenoid because, well, it probably is the solenoid. Anyway, we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's have a look at the engine. That's uh, not sounding healthy. The first port of call here for me is going to be the timing. And that's simply because of the fact that it, it's, well, it's the first thing you're going to check, you know? Timing, tappets, and tuning, three Ts. So you uh, you start with the basics here, you know? Now, we're going to investigate what, why it's sounding like a sack of hammers here at the moment. But, um, yeah, okay, it cut out of its own accord there. Um, yeah, let's let's do the timing statically first of all, and we'll have a look and see how we're looking from there. Um, hopefully, it is far out because if it is, then that's a simple fix. If not, we need to get into the tappets and check the valve clearances, which is a little bit um, more of a faff than just doing the uh, the timing, but still needs to be done. And we'll have a look at that starting motor as well. At least it did spin over with a bit of persuasion, which is a um, which is a good uh, a good indication that it's not too severe. I was I was worried because when I heard, when I tried to start it the first time, I heard a crunch and I was like, oh God, please don't tell me the Bendix gears after shearing. That would really have wrecked my head because the shrapnel goes into the fly at the bell housing and you have to take the engine off to retrieve it all. Okay, so what we're going to be looking for here as far as timing is concerned, that's a, a, a called an SVDA distributor or a single vacuum dual advance distributor. So the the. Uh, Vacuum canister only serves to uh, to retard the engine rather than or sorry it only serves to advance the engine rather than retard it as well, um, the uh, uh, and then there's flyweights inside as well so that that's your dual advance the vacuum canister and the flyweights. But what we need to do is we need to set it statically before we go down the route of timing it. Uh, uh, before we go down the route of ti uh, timing it uh, idling because uh, it won't idle properly. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pop the distributor cap off. We need to pop our vacuum line off as well. So we do that too, okay? So, God almighty. That's not gonna come off without a fight, is it? We'll get something to do that now in a minute. So let's pop our distributor cap off first of all. And what we want is, Jesus, the state of that rolled around. Let's have a quick look at that first of all. It's not as bad as it looked. It actually looked worse than it is. It's okay. Uh, it's um, it's one of those uh, rotor arms with a, a rev limiter on it. Um, I don't necessarily like them that much, but uh, anyway, um, let's uh, let's just make sure first of all that our flyweights are actually working. You can kind of you can turn that uh, shaft in the middle and see if you'll feel the movement there. Um, We'll check our vacuum canister now in a minute as well, but for the moment anyway, the uh, what we'll do is it's running points anyway, so that's uh, 
That's something. So what we need to do now is we need to find out where number one cylinder is on the, on the distributor cap. So number one cylinder is front right. So front is front, it's not, you know, front, front of the engine, not front is in facing you. So. Okay, so that's number one, which is pretty much where it should have been on the distributor cap, okay, so that will be, we need to rotate the engine back the ways so that, that uh, uh, that's over there and uh, that'll get us close to the mark and then we can uh, do the rest of the movement afterwards. I'm actually going to get a socket and turn it that. Okay, so now we can, there you go, that's a bit easier to rotate. And what you can do is if the belt starts slipping on the alternator, just push uh, push the belt in a bit and that kind of tightens it. Now, what we're going to be looking for coming up is a notch on the pulley. And already I see it. Okay, so... There is, there's going to be two notches, okay? One on, the, one on the inside of the pulley, okay? And it'll be on the outside there as well. And then a bigger notch. Now the bigger notch is top dead center. The one you want is about a centimeter um, clockwise of that, which is uh, 7.5 degrees before top dead center. And what you do is you line it up with the uh, split and the crankcase and there's a little notch there. So we should be able to turn it by hand now to get that line around. To where we want it to be and that's basically it there right okay so they don't be inclined to turn the engine back the ways because you're, you're or if you if you do have to do it turn it back a good bit and then bring it back because you're, you're you'll end up introducing backlash into gear drive and all, and all that so okay so now the engine is at 7.5 degrees before top dead center so what we now need to do is we need to set the distributor so that the spark just fires at that point okay and we'll see how far off the mark we are. But the first thing we need to do is we need to undo that 10 millimeter nut there so that we, that'll allow us to rotate the body of the distributor. I'm gonna try and rotate it. Oh, for God's sake, it's, well, that's your problem. Look at that. Like the distributor's completely loose. It's hanging in there. All right, so there we go. So that's gonna be number one problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate, we're gonna uh, turn on the ignition and I'm gonna rotate the distributor um, just until the spark fires uh, like it's in the point open and uh, then basically lock it down well, what you'll actually do is you can you can listen for it now you can do it for you can do it with light as well basically you have the ground side of the light um going through the point and as soon as the light comes on that's basically the point at which you lock it up um but oh, jesus i can't believe how loose that is okay right let's uh let's let's turn on the ignition and go from there Bear in mind, folks, this is a preliminary setting. I am going to use the uh, timing light on it afterwards. There's your vacuum line off there now, right? So, just keep it quiet there, folks, and let me have a listen for the spark. There. It was miles out, absolutely miles out. Let's lock up that distributor now, first of all, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll get our timing light on it and see how we get on. Yeah, the nut was the nut was loose. Okay, so that's uh, so that's that's your static timing done. Okay, it's as simple as that. So now let's see how the engine starts. Okay, and we'll uh, hopefully have a bit more success. Of course, you know what's going to happen now is the uh, starting motor is going to start playing up again. I know you can't see me, but you can hear me. And sure, it's not enough. Well, that's a hell of a lot better, isn't it? Now, I, I, I do reckon there's probably some carb adjustment needed there as well. the engine warm up a little bit. It's not sounding great really. The 
might need a new set of plugs or something even. Of course, the vacuum leak is not going to help. Let's just put that on for a moment. You have to plug that vacuum line. If you don't plug it, you're going to um, you're going to have a vacuum leak. Anyway, just let let the engine warm up a little bit. I cannot get it to stay running. It just keeps on dying on me. Um, even when you try and uh, bring the throttle on, it just bogs down and just dies. I'm thinking it might be a blocked idle jet in this, so uh, that's the next thing to do is take out the idle jet and have a look and see if that, uh, that solves the problem. Um, it revs up all right, so I'd say the main is all right, but uh, if the idle is an easy one to get at. It's just actually in the side of the carb. That's it in there. Um, so we can pop that out. It's a, a 10mm socket and uh, take a look at it and see if, uh, see if that solves the problem. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Jesus, it's, it's running like a dog. I mean, I don't know how the hell, how the hell the owner was actually driving it at all with it the way it is. Um, but look, if we can, we can get it right, you know. I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world. I think that would actually isn't a ten; that's an eight. Um, Okay, the idle jet definitely wasn't blocked, so it's definitely not that anyway. So, now that's not to say that the ports in the carb itself aren't, but without having an airline here to blow it out or anything like that, there's not a lot I can do to check that at this moment in time. So, let's, uh, let's kind of continue on as we're going for the moment. It looks like it, the, the carb has been replaced. It looks like the carb has been replaced at some point in the not too distant past. So, I would suggest this is probably in good order, it just needs tuning. So, what we can do is we can go back to, we can go back to our base setting on the carb and go from there. So that basically is, uh, your larger, larger screw there is the idle, uh, the idle screw and the smaller one is the mixture screw. So if you kind of set them so you're sort of two and a half uh, turns out on each one, you should get it to run reasonably okay. And what we do is we pop out a spark plug and have a look at it as well and see if maybe maybe the spark plug is a, maybe the, the spark plugs will tell you a lot as to whether it's running rich or lean. So actually, we'll do that first. Getting the spark plug out in the VW van is not the most difficult thing in the world. And go for, uh, and go for this lad down here. drive socket set no there we go can't have been that loose was it that was practically finger tight They're not supposed to be stitched in their aluminium ha heads, but like that was really loose. Right, let's have a look and see what we're dealing with. They do not look like the standard Volkswagen uh, spark plugs either. What the hell? They look like completely the wrong. Like they're 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 twice the length they should be, unless it's got a uh, different uh, different heads on it or something like that. But I mean. Shouldn't do. Um, it's very strange. Let's just put it back in for a moment anyway. It's not particularly rich or lean. Like it's, it, it's a little rich, if anything. But to be honest with you, you're better off a bit richer than a bit lean. Hard to 
see the timing mark. and to spool a little bit more. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. Alright. Might just see if I can get some tipex to make a mark on the pulley for the 7.5 before top mark. Okay, so I got a, um, a blue uh, felt tip marker just to make a mark on it. <laughs> It'll do the job, it's, it's good enough. The auto engine off feature is very handy. There we go, right, that's tight now. So now we know the timing is right, okay? So the next thing I need, the next thing I'm curious about is to see if there's any vacuum leaks, because that's not an uncommon issue with these as well. So we're gonna have a go and see if one of the rubber boots is split or if they may be loose or something like that. Um because yeah, so let's get the timing right out of the way anyway now we're we don't know what we're going to do with that. I'm just looking at the state of that air filter up there. I'm going to actually take it off and have a look and see. Is Could it really be that simple that it's actually just a clogged air filter? No, it probably isn't, but, you know, look at For the sake of two seconds, let's just try and run it now and see how we get on. Jeez, if, it's all, if that's all it is, <laughs> then happy days. Not at all. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, it, it was no, never going to be that simple, folks, was it? All right. Ah, why didn't any of you point out that the bloody uh, fuel coil off solenoid is disconnected? <laughs> I'd say a few of you were screaming at the TV there. Right, <laughs> hang on, let's try that again. Down. 
a bit of tuning, I don't think we'll go amiss here. So let's uh, let's just tweak that and see. settings and just see if I can get it uh, like so we go go all the way in and out two and a half turns there is a I still think there is a vacuum leak Be the brake booster. Obviously, it's going to kill the engine, but. Okay, um, let's uh, let's reset that uh, carb and then we'll go from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually just check for vacuum leaks. I suppose the thing is I need the other thing I need to do I should really do is I should adjust the uh, adjust the points, but I haven't got a feeler blade with me, so I can't do that at the moment. I know I, I know people are probably saying, oh, well, you should do that before you mess with the carb. But look, it's probably one of those things that's going to have to be revisited anyway. I'm kind of trying to do a preliminary fact find here as much as anything else. I fully expect to kind of be delving further into this engine uh, but um, for the moment anyway it's it's kind of a good starting point uh, I, what I, so what I've done here now is I have um, I've actually set the the idle air screw uh, down to uh, uh, so it's two and a half turns out the other thing I'm going to do now well before we do anything else I'm going to just make sure that those clamps and they're not the clamps on the boots for the uh, and the boots for the manifolds are tight. They were certainly not tight. So, I don't stitch things, by the way, folks, in case people are thinking, oh, Jesus, there he is stitching something else. Like, that, they're loose. Like, end of story. So, right, so that might, might make a difference. I, honestly, I doubt it. I mean, they were loose, but they weren't that loose. So let's, uh, what we'll do is we'll start the engine. Hopefully it'll run all right. Uh, all right enough for us to check this. And then what we'll do is we'll just spray a bit of, a bit of UB40 around the place and see if the if the um, engine picks up at all when I spray it, and if it does, then that's our uh, that's our issue. I'll, uh, I'll try to tighten them as well in a minute. The vacuum uh, vacuum lines for the uh, uh, let's see if that one there is actually loose because that's a vulnerable one. I wouldn't have called it loose now to be honest with you. Um, okay, let's start it up and have a look. on I'm just make sure that the coil is a bit hot. It's alright. What happens is the, the auto choke is off now. Even though the engine's not hot. A few guys out of hand way there a bit. Have we 
got a split boot here. These are a bloody nightmare to change. I think we might. They're looking a bit perished all right, there's no doubt about that, but are they actually leaking is the question. Okay, so what I've done here now is I've actually disconnected the brake booster line and uh, plugged it uh, with a socket extension. So that is one one possible source of vacuum leaks. So now I'm going to see if the engine will run properly now. And we'll we'll, uh, we'll have a gander and see, uh, see if we're anyway closer to the mark. running long enough for me to get to the back of the bloody van. Let's just turn that out another turn. And we'll put that, put that on for the moment. Let's see if we can get it to keep going. that I pressed the accelerator pedal and I shouldn't have done it now. to take that carb off and strip it down and have a look at it. It's like nothing I do now will actually let the engine idle for any length of time. It's just, it dies on me as soon as I get it running. It'll rev up, but there's, it's like there's no idle circuit in the car whatsoever. It's just dead. So I'm kind of thinking now at this stage, the next step is to pull the carb. I, I haven't found any vacuum leaks. I haven't seen anything obvious. Um, it's, uh, you know, I mean, look at... I can check around the like I, I can check the the kind of car base gasket when I have it off, and I've had a look at the uh, manifold boots. Um, I'll I'll check out and see if there is a, a series of VW engines that have those longer spark plugs. Uh, maybe the spark plugs are wrong, you know. I mean, it, it, but there's definitely something seriously wrong with this uh, with, with this setup the way it is. I mean, obviously, it shouldn't be like that. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I'll, what I'll also do as well is when I come back, I'll bring a set of feeler blades with me and I'll adjust the points and uh, see if uh, see if that's what's causing our issue. But given the fact that it's picking up so easily on, um, uh, like when you rev it, it's, it, well, I mean, it's bogging down at first, but it, that's because it's coming off the idle circuit onto the mains. And that's my belief on it anyway. It's going off the idle circuit onto the mains, and then when it goes onto the main, it's fine, it picks up grand, but getting it out of the idle circuit is just under fueling. Um, I mean, maybe the accelerator pump isn't working either. Uh, that could be another thing to look at. But uh, I think one of the big problems is it's a, a knockoff, um, a knockoff replacement carb, and some of those empty carbs can be a little bit sketchy at times. 
we also have to have a look and make sure that the jets themselves, the actual size of the jets are correct for this engine because somebody could have just bolted that carb on and not, not check the damn thing with it. It could be, it could be uh, adjusted for a 1300 engine, you know? That's, a, that's kind of the type of thing you have to look for. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get that carb off. Fuel line is take is making life difficult. Come on, get off, you bastard. There we go. Alright, that's the carb off. Okay, so I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. I'm going to take the cover off the top of the carb and we're going to have a look inside and see if there's anything untoward. Like if the float bowl is full of shite. That'll certainly uh, point us towards one problem. If the needle valve is stuck, the, the, if the float bowl isn't full or is over full or there's a number of things we'll be looking for when we get in here. I think the number one problem with it though is the fact that it says empty on it. Unfortunately, they're just crap. All right, so there's, there's the top of the uh, carb with the needle valve in. So let's see if that's working. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so that's not a problem. So let's get in a bit closer here now. Take off that gasket, making sure I don't damage it. Take the float retainer out. Over there as well, and the float can now come out. And looking down inside it, that's not bad at all. Unfortunately, that's it's fair to say that that's not our issue. I mean, it's not perfect, but you're never going to get it perfect. So let's uh, let's just um, yeah. We'll we'll what we'll, what we'll do is I'll uh, I'll take the um, I'll, pe I'll pour that petrol out and we will take the main jet out at the bottom and have a look at that. It's not blocked anyway, and it is a 127.5, which I would have thought would be all right actually. But uh, I'm going to double check that and see if it says and if if uh, I'm going to Google it and see what other people have in them. But a 127.5 main would strike me as being all right because I think on a 1300 you have like a 120. So I'm going to pop it back in for the moment anyway. I'll take out the uh, idle jet again, and um, now that I can actually have a proper look, and we'll see what the story is there. Okay, so I did a bit of reading, and a 127.5 main for a 1600 is absolutely fine, so that's uh, not the issue, and it's not blocked either, so, you know, I mean, I think we're at a wild goose chase. Uh, let's pop that back in there. Okay, so there's that. So now let's have a look at our idle is 55 and 55 would strike me has been perfect for that as well but i'm going to take it out i'm going to just have a look into the port i'm going to blow through it with my mouth that's not blocked anyway Or if it was, I just unblocked it. <laughs> All right. I don't see any problems with that carburetor, to be honest with you. The only thing I'm looking at here, and it is uh, something that might be uh, a consideration, this little rubber bung is split. I'm only after noticing that there now. It might be that. I think what I'll do is I'll put the car back on 
and uh, yeah, we'll. Um, I don't, there's nothing wrong with that carburetor at all. I think though it was replaced in the hunt for another running issue. All right, so the carb is back on there now, and um, everything's uh, reconnected and all that. So uh, unfortunately, we didn't find the smoking gun we were looking for, so to speak. So um, let's uh, let's just start it up anyway. I kind of reset a couple of things there on the carb while I had it off. So we'll um, we'll see. I don't think it's going to make much difference, if any at all, to be honest with you. But um, like you know, just even the act of making sure everything is nipped up and fully home and all that. Might be enough. Now, it'll take a bit of cranking to get started. Oh, my leg is in a bloody cramp here from crouching down as well. Uh, it'll take a bit of cranking, but uh, because the float bowl is now empty, but uh, it should, uh, should do the trick. All right. What the hell? That's mad, like. All right, okay. Um, let's let's try that again. In my life. That's an old trick for clearing out any blockages in the carb. Uh, you probably didn't see what I did. I put my hand over the carb. All right, I've faffed around with this long enough, and I'm tired. My legs are in a cramp, and I'm no better off now than I was when I. Uh, started to be honest with you so i need to walk away from it and come back with, to it with a fresh head the next thing to look at is it, the fuel system is fine okay the fuel system is definitely fine next i need to look at the uh, ignition system and start uh, start getting into that and uh, maybe stick a new set of points in it and a i think i have a spare set of points knocking around somewhere so i'll throw them into it and um we'll uh, have a look at uh, you know, I'll, I'll try and find out what the story is with those spark plugs as well. If they're the wrong ones for the engine, then we'll put the right ones in it. And we will, uh, yeah, and then we'll do the tappets and stuff like that as well. But I'm damned if I'm doing that now. So this is going to be a kind of a two-part, maybe even a three-part video on uh, how to get this bus to run properly. Uh, there are other issues as well, by the way. The wipers aren't working and the, um, what else did he tell me? Uh... I know he said the wipers weren't working anyway, so we need to have a look at that. And there's a couple of other electrical gremlins and stuff like that here and there too. So definitely uh, a few jobs to do. It's only just back from the body shop. And actually the guy who did the body work on it, um, he did a really nice job actually. The front panel looks really, really smart and it has been replaced. Um, and I need a good bodywork guy to do some uh, rectification on my Beetle to get it right and uh, get the A-pillar sorted out on the passenger side. Uh, apparently he's a bit expensive, but to be honest with you, if he does a good job, I don't mind paying for it, you know. So I may bring my Beetle over to him. He's not a million miles away from here. So, you know, it's great being able to actually see quality workmanship and body work in this country because it's, Jesus, it's hard to find, to be honest with you, sometimes. There's so many cowboys out there. I'm not saying everybody's a cowboy, but there's a lot of them. And, um, 
yeah, uh, the, the the guy who did this. I mean, certainly from what I'm looking at, he wasn't a cowboy. Um, but uh, yeah, look, it's it, you know, it's great to get back to a bit of tinkering, folks. And um, yeah, we'll 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 stick uh, we'll stick with this and uh, get it right, and then eventually uh, we will get back onto this poor fella in the back corner here because um, I really do love that car and uh, I do want to get back to it. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, if if all goes well with the house move and we get the house that, I'm, that uh, we get the house we're looking for, I am going to have an amazing workshop in it, and um, I won't be uh, I won't be availing of this uh, space here. Much as I uh, much as it's a great space, I won't be using it anymore, and uh, I'll be um, moving my entire fleet to my house. So uh, it'll be um, yeah, it'll be that'll be great. You know, so. And Float will have a proper workshop and there'll be plenty of tinkering videos to come with that. So, uh, yeah, listen, folks, thanks very much for watching and uh, thanks for your patience and words of encouragement and everything like that. really does mean a lot to me and my family. And um, I'll uh, catch you in a future video. Talk to you soon.